Are you lifting your voice in prayer? Touch me tonight. Visit me. Give me an encounter by your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ask the Lord for grace to be attentive. Grace to be focused. Grace to be open to receive all that the Holy Spirit will be doing tonight. Can you lift your hands, lift your voice in one minute and cry seriously. Seriously. Elama shobra hesebeleke parandoskiata. Kena paratos kabrandi gebelatos sabrasi gedebelekata. Shaprati sali gabrandi gebaratos safraski balana baka parandos. Shabriki parundis keli brandi gebala kupratus kabriata bada. Lift your voice and pray. Passionately, seriously. Salima to pratika palando savrigedi badash. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Good evening. Good evening everybody in the name of Jesus may God bless our family following online all across let your heart be open we're about to receive the Word of God in the name of Jesus if you submit yourself diligently to the truths that come in here week in week out sincerely with a determination to grow in a very short time you will see that your life becomes a sign and a wonder and then a marvel to you hallelujah the truths that you hear week in week out the truths that you receive are not the opinions of a man they are not cunningly devised fables they are not suggestions they are roadmaps, they are pathways that lead to specific spiritual destinies or levels or um, dimensions in the spirit. And if you submit yourself to learn, you don't need to worry about becoming. You just submit yourself to learn and you will find out line upon line precept upon precept your life is becoming a sign and a wonder until the Lord becomes fully glorified in and through your life I want you to trust the truths that you are receiving that even though they come from the frailty of human vessels but the advantage is that the spirit of grace is always available to ensure that what you hear and what you receive is consistent with what God desires it is the reason why as frail and as human as we are, we let him have his way. That declaration to have his way is a very powerful declaration. The meaning is that he moves beyond our frailty in understanding, our frailty in communication, and then he communicates a, in a way that only you can understand. And so you'll be surprised that I'm saying something and it means 10 different things to 10 different people and none of them is receiving a wrong idea. The Holy Spirit himself knows how to channel that idea to speak to your heart in a way that will make you believe him. I'm praying that tonight will be a night of encounter for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Tonight by the Spirit of God, I want to show you a road map to a greater level of grace a greater level of power in the spirit I want to guide you by the spirit of grace to help you in a way that will be real to you to experience the supernatural power of God the wisdom of God that your life will be in every way 
indomitable. My goal for you, like I've always told you, is that your life becomes an experiential manifestation of the glory of God. That everybody who looks at you will know for certainty that God has men who have allowed his glory to find expression. That you not just be an ordinary Christian going to church, trying to make money, trying to raise or support a family, and then die. That could not have been the kind of life God designed for you. Hallelujah. And so make sure you don't just sit as a ritual and listen. And I hope by now you know that the house of God is a school. It means when the word of God is coming, you shouldn't just be watching and listening and hoping that you are receiving any, everything without writing. No, you should listen and you should write. When John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos, he did not just see, he did not just listen, he was instructed to write. Why? Because the words were faithful and true. If John saw alone, if John listened alone and did not write, would not be beneficiaries of his encounter. The things you are writing today will be the manual that some of you will use in your own ministries tomorrow. It will be the manual that some of you will use in your own programs. When the grace of God begins to speak fully and the nations now begin to make a demand, to place a demand upon your life, you will make reference to these things. Hallelujah. So make sure you don't just listen or come. Uh, by, by God's grace, I believe that everyone here, I assume, and especially those who have been here for a while, planted sincerely here, you shouldn't stroll to church just with a, a tiny Bible that was given as a gift, wearing designer clothes, designer watches, designer everything, then a small, maybe carelessly folded pocket-sized Bible, no biro, no nothing, and you're not writing, even if it's electronically, absolutely nothing. The Word of God comes and you agree with it. This is true. And then you don't write anything. At the end of it, you'll find out that you are the only one who is not growing. Everybody who is passionately in love with Jesus and serious with the truth keep growing while you sit down in the presence of truth and light and yet it's not imparting on your heart. I forbid that on your behalf. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Grant us grace. Help us in the name of Jesus Christ. A wise man said, you are born to look like your parents but you will die looking like your decisions it is true that many people are born looking like their parents i can see you and know are you this child of so 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 and so yes but at the end of your life you will not die looking like your parents you will die looking like the summation of the decisions that you have made with your life and the greatest decision i know a man can make is the decision to know and love the Lord and then to grow in the knowledge of the truth. The decision to know the Lord, love the Lord, and then contend to grow in the knowledge of the truth. Because your excelling in life has no sentiments attached to it. It depends on the level of illumination that you know, second only to your personal encounter with God. Are we together? You must desire to grow in the knowledge of the truth. Listen, let me tell you. The days that we are now in, not even the days coming, the days that we are now in are days that will punish ignorance. These days will punish ignorance. It will punish ignorance. You will see many good people becoming victims of the vicissitudes of life. Not necessarily because... Um, they are bad or evil in themselves but because of the bankruptcy of sufficient light arise shine Isaiah 60 and verse 1 for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you arise shine for your light is come so these are not the days of ignorance at all number two these are not the days of limited knowledge limited knowledge oh i'm not directly ignorant i know a little about this 
a little about that, a little about this subject, a little about this dimension in the spirit, you will also suffer like someone who was never saved because light has a standard to deliver. You don't just contend for truth the way you want. There is a standard. There is a dimension of illumination you must have like currency to purchase certain spiritual realities for you. And so if your illumination is not high enough, you will be surprised that whilst on one hand you are not totally in ignorance, but you do not have the knowledge enough to produce result. Hallelujah. And these are not the days of bragging. I know, I know. When you truly know, the results will show. Are we together now? So the days of saying, I know, I know, I know, and then indefinitely, the result never gets to speak in your life. That should challenge you. The Bible says, ever learning, but never coming unto the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning. I know about prayer, yet your prayer life and the benefits that should come from a rich prayer life is not showing. I know about revelation. I can quote John 3.16. I can quote this and that. But in the presence of situations and circumstances, the word you know or claim to know cannot deliver, cannot produce victory. I know that I have authority in Christ. I know that I have power. You're not able to use that authority and that power to command results for yourself in your own life, nor help others as an instrument of God's mercy. That means the knowledge is useless. Listen, when knowledge fails to deliver, you need to vet whether it is light indeed. There are times that you have knowledge, but maybe what you may be lacking, like I've taught you, is understanding. Knowledge is a coalition of truth. A coalition, coalition of truth. You're bringing truth together, useful information. Understanding is comprehending the working dynamics, the principles behind those truths. What makes them work? That's the job of understanding. Wisdom is now obtaining grace to apply, to engage the truths you have understood appropriately so that they deliver. And the way they deliver is to commit God's power. You see, God's power does not work because you want it to work. There are rules of engagement. Hallelujah. I just came tonight to really share my heart with us. And, and I'm starting on this note because it's been a growing passion in my heart. I like to see believers who are matured, not assumed maturity. There are times that a, a little child can try to wear his mother's clothes. Have you seen that kind of thing? Does it make the child an adult? Flowing gown. He's still a child. He tries to put on the mother's wig and he's still a child. Sometimes tries to carry the mother's bag or tries to carry the father's car key. Possessing what belongs to an adult does not make you an adult. No. It is growth. Genuine growth. Are we together now? Yeah. So just talking like a matured Christian does not necessarily make you a matured Christian. You can pay the price to grow. And growth is not a gift. Don't forget this. Growth is not a gift. The grace that produces growth is a gift. But that grace must be engaged to deliver growth. The breast milk that the baby sucks is a gift from God through his mother to him. But whether that child will suck for his own growth is his responsibility. Are we together now? Yeah. The best that the mother can do is to make the milk available for the child to grow and there are all kinds of skills to getting that milk available but if the child does not engage to eat and take responsibility to eat as many times as his growth will require do you know that children don't eat three times a day babies it's adults that choose to eat three times a day babies don't even fast once they are born, they fire eating immediately because at that point, growth is important. There are certain diseases that will affect them if they don't grow. So the assignment is to grow immediately. And the mother knows that her job for at least a year or so will be to feed this child. That's it. Feed and cry and sleep and laugh and wake up and feed largely. But as funny as that sounds, you allow the baby to keep feeding. One day, the baby will try to say, Mommy, Daddy, you see. Funny, but the child is growing. 
Then one day you will pronounce it properly. Then one day he tries to walk and fall, walk and fall, walk and fall until one day he runs faster than you. I'm praying for you. Whatever has stopped you from growing, that you, you are just registering week after week in church, but you cannot attest to the fact that you are really growing. I'm praying for you. Let that demonic cancer die from your life. Let it die from your life. That your life will justify the spiritual investments that God is making. Are we together now? I'm not talking of one testimony and another testimony of breakthrough. I'm talking of rising to a point where God can count on you. God can trust you. You are not just in receiving mode alone. You have become a giver by reason of your growth. Hallelujah. That you access grace. You access glory. When there is darkness, God sends you. When there is trouble, he sends you. In your family, he sends you. Across this nation, he sends you. Across the nations of the earth, he sends you. You have so grown spiritually. God can allocate a space for you in his program. And find rest knowing that there is a worthy ambassador there. That under your watch, God's program will not fail. If it's a financial program and he places you there, he knows that the lives he has placed under your care are safe because you have mastered the key that keeps the abundance of heaven to you. Listen, before I continue, I'm going to ask you to pray. And this is from the depth of my heart. I came with serious passion tonight. Any area in your life where you know the word of God is not yet working, I'd like you to pray in one minute. Father, open my eyes. Let me know what is wrong. What am I not getting yet? What am I not getting yet? What am I not getting yet? I am understanding scripture, but it's not yet delivering the result. My finances is still down. Um, I trust, I, I pray that it works, but it's not yet working. My home is not yet working. This is not condemnation. This is church. It's like the hospital. When you go to the hospital, you don't tell the doctor what is right with you. What is right with you is not what brought you to the hospital. You came to the hospital to remedy what is wrong. It doesn't mean everything is wrong. But when you come to the hospital, your, the doctor will ask you, what is the issue? Take a minute to pray. Father, I've been at this level of grace for years. At this level of grace for months. There is no multiplication of grace in my life. That means there is tauntedness in my knowing the revelations that are connected to grace walk on me tonight someone pray if you really came to church to pray you really came to church to grow take a minute this version of believer is not bringing great glory to the name of the lord i cry for transition i cry for transition in the spirit I cannot bless the nations this way. I cannot serve his grace to the nations at this level of knowledge, at this level of anointing, at this level of prosperity, at this level of influence. Shapali keparinde kebrakatos sala kresta beneke tebaratos shabri kebelaka paratos zafrende kebeleke baratos. Go ahead and pray. Haggai chapter 2 and verse 9 says, And the glory of the latter house, the glory of this latter house, he's not just talking about a building, he's talking about you, that this glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. There is such a thing as former. There is such a thing as latter. You should not remain at your former self for a long time, indefinitely without transition. Someone take a minute and pray. You are not wasting your time. Help me. Show me mercy. This level of stuntedness in my prayer life. Show me mercy.
in Jesus name I pray I sense in my spirit to give us two more prayer points I don't know why the Holy Spirit is moving this way I'd like you to pray and say every consequence of ignorance in my life because of something I did not know my life is currently in a phase right now where only God can help me I'm praying oh God that you bring me out of that calamity and remedy my ignorance by light go ahead and pray something I did not know put me in financial trouble something I did not know put me in spiritual trouble something I did not know gave demons and spirits an edge over my life even though born again something I did not know maybe you did not understand the power of relationships and it's brought you a lot of stuntedness and stagnation maybe you've not been taught the power of prayer where you came from and you did not engage and it gave Satan an advantage over your life I like you to pray that by mercy God will bring you out of every trouble that ignorance has put you in someone pray every trouble every calamity that ignorance of yesteryears ignorance of yesterday ignorance of yester months have placed me in in the name of Jesus Christ by mercy I come out of it by mercy I come out of it by mercy I come out of it the glory of this latter house this latter house this latter house called Joshua Selman this latter house called Koinonia shall be greater 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 in Jesus name we pray final prayer point and then you will sit down look at me every level in the spirit demands a certain weight of glory and a certain kind and measure of the anointing are we together now that you are anointed does not mean you are anointed enough for the mountains that stand before you today yesterday's grace may not be able to bring down today's mountain that is the reason why we grow in grace you're going to cry that the anointing will fall afresh upon you celebrating yesterday's results without growing will only leave you in disappointment father you are doing something new across the globe you are changing people's stories you are people are molting to mightier versions of themselves i cry unto you show me mercy let fire from heaven let a fresh anointing rest upon me rest upon me rest upon me rest upon me that as your spirit is moving from nation to nation moving from place to place from believer to believer empowering men afresh granting men capacity to produce extraordinary results do not leave me behind oh god i cry for greater power let me host heavier dimensions of your glory Alina Marantos Cabriga Beleke Paratos Yate Crativa Zinemelta Parasco Parantos Shabres Sali Paratos Capretti Capelanda Crust Ibratos Savredina Capranti Capelega Paratos Cabriga de Bele de Bosch hallelujah 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 let me give us one more prayer request the holy spirit is just placing on my mind a message that i preached while we're having one of our conferences in uk revelation chapter 4 1 and 2. it said after this i looked I preach a message on it come up hither part one you can get it and listen to it but I just want to bring out something there very profound statement it says after this I looked and I shared in that teaching how that as simple as this statement is it says after this you have to examine what the this is are we together now he's saying after this you have to understand what happened from chapter 1 to chapter 4 there were already mighty strikes in the spirit 
I hope you know that before he was even caught up in that vision, it was because the elemental forces had no effect on him. He was already a powerful man. They tried to boil him. Bible history would tell us, but the man would not boil in oil. And he was banished to the Isle of Patmos. And that was where he had a vision. So the guy was not some lukewarm, careless, callous Christian. He was already a spiritual man with proof. Then the Bible says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And then he began to see the description of the seven lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstand, the Bible says, he saw one like the son of man. He began to describe Jesus. Then Jesus gave him a mandate to write the letters to the seven churches that were then in Asia Minor, but prophetically representing the universal church, bringing several messages that represent several dispensations. And after that, the Bible now tells us, after this, I looked. This right here you see shows you the power of focus and the humility to press. There are some V's that if it happens in your life, you will not have the focus to look again. After the achievement, after the miracles, after the advancement, after the great name, he said, I still looked. Focus. Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth for the things that are before me, I press. I press. You are going to pray. Because sometimes what limits us from experiencing the greater glory is not something wrong. It's something God did before in your life. You camp around something he did. A miracle he wrought through you. A level of grace he granted you. And you will not know that he has lifted the bar higher than the dimension that you were and you will not press for more but john said regardless what i had seen regardless my achievements in the spirit after this i looked it takes humility to look after this it takes passion for god to look after this you're going to pray and say father regardless how you lift me grant me the focus to continue with you that everything that sustains the power to distract me let it die tonight is someone praying for some of us the day you prospered you stopped looking stop looking to jesus stop looking to the spirit the day you prospered for someone the day you got a job the day you got married the day you got the child you've been waiting for the day you were promoted the day you were you experienced increase after this and in spite of this i still looked like you will be looking tonight to that perfect law of liberty regardless the achievements i come hungry i come thirsty i come desperate someone is praying more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life more hallelujah praise the name of the lord i'm teaching tonight on the spiritual man the spiritual man the spiritual man i want to show you by the spirit a roadmap to grace and glory the spiritual man the someone you have severe pain around your rib area the power of god is touching you right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of... I curse that spirit now. In the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Spirit of God. The Lord is showing me someone else. I'm seeing severe pain around your lumbar area. Very excruciating pain. I take authority over that pain now. I decree and declare be healed in the name of Jesus. Let that weight of glory rest upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing me someone you have severe pain around your left eye. Your left eye. Very burning sensation around your left eye. It's affecting your seeing. 
in the name of Jesus Christ let the anointing of the spirit rest upon that eye and bring you life bring you healing right now bring you life bring you healing right now bring you life bring you healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ life and healing right now someone you have noise you, you have very severe pain noise around your left ear very discomforting noise you hear but discomforting noise the power of God is touching you right now and the Lord is bringing you healing bringing you healing supernatural healing someone is being healed of your kneecap your kneecap you're having excruciating pain around your kneecap in the name of Jesus I cause that kneecap problem whoever that person is by the power that raised Christ from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I cause that kneecap let, let me just just allow us to exhaust this healing river whatever God is doing tonight let him just flow and bring life to people someone you have a very severe pain around your heart area when you wake up in the morning very severe pain sometimes you have to just grab your chest because there's severe pain I'm praying for you wherever you are in the name of Jesus let the power that raised Christ from the dead rest upon you and bring you healing right now bring you healing right now the Lord is showing me a vision of someone I'm, I'm sure this is a spiritual issue but it's like there is a blindfold I'm seeing somebody like a ban was put over your eyes and you are completely covered and in the name of Jesus whoever that is I don't care whether it's a demonic thing that has covered you so that you don't see the path for the next level so that you don't see what else God is doing in the name of Jesus I pray for you everyone whose eyes has been blinded by demonic occurrences that you are not able to see and perceive and discern I tear off that veil right now from your eyes I tear off that veil right now from your eyes I tear off that veil now from your eyes in the name of Jesus Christ I don't know who I'm speaking to you a gentleman the Lord is saying I should tell you it's time for the retreat there is there is a time that God wants you to spend with him there is a level of glory that you will receive in that place of retreat and the Lord is saying I should tell you it's time for that retreat it's time for that retreat I pray for you whoever you are may that grace to stay until you carry substance in the spirit let it rest upon you now 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 the Lord is asking me to avert the spirit of death from a family I don't know which family that is but in the name of Jesus every programming of death over you or your loved ones if you are standing you are standing for your loved ones I'm praying for you every conspiracy of darkness to have a member of your family go down the grave whoever digs that pit they will fall into it in the name of Jesus whoever digs that pit they will fall into it by the spirit of grace and in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus back pain the Lord is healing someone of back pain you are not able to bend you feel excruciating pain around your back I stretch my hands now and in the name of Jesus I decree and declare be healed now you're feeling pain around your throat area you have a problem swallowing in the name of Jesus whoever you are I pray for you let the hand of God rest upon you now bring you life and bring you healing bring you life and bring you healing there is a family of ladies the Lord is showing me now there is an embargo upon them they don't rise it's like a curse upon the family before we sit down a family of ladies only ladies I'm praying for you whoever you are provided you are on this ground I don't care how long this course has been in the name of Jesus Christ I represent the power of the Most High be released from that course now be released from that embargo now I say to you again be released from that curse now be released from that embargo now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus there's someone here you have 
is i don't know what the medical condition is but you are always needing blood like what happens to maybe a, a, a sickler or something always needing blood it's like your your blood level is never enough it keeps depleting this is a demonic thing i don't know where you are i'm feeling fire on my hands and as, as i'm saying this in the name of jesus i stretch my hands towards you whatever it is that is depleting your blood because the life of the flesh is in the blood i pray for you by the power that raised christ from the dead everything trying to deplete your blood deplete your life i take authority over it right now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus for someone god is speaking to you concerning that job what he has said will still come to pass i'm saying it to you by the spirit of god what he has said will still come to pass what he has said will still come to pass it doesn't matter what you see now it looks like god's word concerning your job doesn't seem to be coming to pass but i'm prophesying to you at this service tonight that what god has said will still come to pass in the name of jesus lift your hands in one minute and receive every prophetic word and then we'll get to the word of god quickly lift your hands receive every word that he's brought in jesus mighty name we pray amen please be seated god bless you sometimes god just moves in a way that he sees most is his service he's the host we're only vessels and so when he chooses to move like this it is because he's responding to the hunger the desire of someone as our faces are in truth so are our various needs there are people if god did not reach out to you like this perhaps your faith level would not even be high enough to receive the word hallelujah there are people who are here like greeks except they see a sign except they see wonders they will not believe the spiritual man let's get to the word of god i sense that god is going to be doing a lot of things whilst i teach and so when that burden comes we'll just pray and if it does come i'll just minister again as the spirit of god allows so let's just be prepared to flow i believe that this is a prophetic service and i'm sure that god is responding to someone's prayer i'm sure that god is responding to someone's hunger I'm sure that God is responding to someone's desire and I'm sure God is bringing confirmation to someone because he told you that tonight will be a night of encounter between you and him and so this is a build up to that moment where you will encounter God may you truly encounter him in Jesus name hallelujah now from a spiritual standpoint there are three kinds of men I'm teaching on the spiritual man I want to show you by this teaching the pathway to accessing greater glory, greater power, and greater grace. There are three kinds of men from a spiritual standpoint that the Bible identifies. Number one, the Bible calls the first kind of man, spiritually speaking now, not just speaking anthropology, but from a spiritual standpoint. Number one, a natural man or the natural man. This is the first kind of man that the Bible identifies from a spiritual standpoint. And there are a few characteristics around this kind of man. Please look up number one. The Bible says that man is unregenerate. The meaning of that is that he's not encountered Jesus. He's not saved. Are we together now? The natural man according to scripture is one who has not encountered the life of Christ. He is not in union with the Spirit of God. He is unregenerate. He is not saved. So every man who is not in Christ, no matter how intellectually sound, no matter how successful, no matter how in enlightened as, as far as secular enlightenment is concerned, it doesn't mean they are bad people, but by the Bible description of such people, no matter what your achievement is no matter what your level of education now qualification is no matter your level of exposure as an individual once you have not encountered the god of the bible through the process of salvation and that's by hearing the gospel and receiving it when that has not happened to you the bible calls you a natural man 
first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 so the natural man the bible says he receiveth not the things of the spirit notice what he cannot receive the bible does not say that there's something wrong with his comprehension of things in life the natural man can be a professor so he's an intelligent person doesn't have to be a dull person the natural man can be a multi-millionaire the natural man can be a billionaire the natural man can have physical things because those things work by laws are we together now and some of those laws do not necessarily need you to be saved to understand them god gave everybody a mind and you don't have to be saved for your mind to be activated your faculty of reasoning assimilating and interpreting things can work whether you are born again or not it is god's gift to all men once you are alive even lower animals have their faculties of perception and reasoning at a level activated already so they have instincts they have the ability to make judgment within their limited understanding are we together now so when the bible talks about a natural man he's not talking about a failure this is a spiritual description because for most people we think natural people are necessarily failures no they are not failures at all some of the natural people we have on earth today are those we consider the most successful people from a secular standpoint so when the bible talks about a natural man he's not at all speaking in terms of physical things so that you have someone who has a car a great job maybe a, a great family the word natural is only with respect to his encountering jesus encountering the holy spirit are we learning already because there are many people who will think because life is working well for them they have money good education good investments great children great family they'll say i mean what what more do i need for such people if you don't give them this orientation when you are talking about the natural man they think you are talking about a poor person who is a failure who is a needy who is hoping that god will help him the natural man is not just talking about the unbeliever in the village who does not have a house does not have a car is broke uh -uh. when the bible talks about the natural man he's speaking a spiritual language that anyone who does not yet have his organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit and the things of god as far as that is concerned he's a natural man give it to us now first corinthians 2 14. i'm describing for you first and foremost the three kinds of men from a spiritual standpoint so that the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him notice why he doesn't receive them they are foolishness to him neither can he know them because it will require a faculty that is not yet activated in his life do you know please look up as simple as spiritual things are that you receive with all your heart it is because something has been activated within your spirit man that gives you an appreciation for things like prayer an appreciation for things like fasting are we together an appreciation for things like coming to church loving the lord honor to priesthood you know loving the word of god these things are natural to you because you have left that realm of the natural man but to one who is not saved remember your former self for some of you it was foolishness to you if you heard someone pray in tongues you say how can such an intelligent adult act like this someone quoting scripture or speaking in the name of jesus i am blessed and you tell the person please use your brain now you are this kind of person the bible or you were this kind of person the bible is talking about now that it is foolishness to him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned are we learning now so there is a natural man the bible says anyone who has not encountered christ anyone who cannot be fruitful towards spiritual understanding is a natural man very quickly the second kind of man that the bible identifies is called the carnal man the carnal man who is the carnal man according to first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1 the carnal man is a believer he's saved he's encountered jesus christ but that individual is still a slave to the impulses of the flesh he's not contended for growth the word carnal means sensual a slave to the flesh and i brethren could not speak unto you as spiritual paul says 
but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So he's saying, I came to you hoping that I will speak. Do you know what that means? That means Paul did not speak to everybody at the same level. The first thing he did was to discern which of these three men. If you were a natural man, then there was a way Paul spoke to you. If you were a carnal person, there was a way Paul spoke to you. And this is so true. As a man of God, it's important for you to obtain grace from God and discern the spiritual state of the people that you are speaking to so that you do not waste truth and it falls upon lives that do not even have an appreciation nor the faculty to understand what you are saying. Are we together? There are times that when you discern that these people are largely unregenerate, usually your context there becomes to present Jesus to them like in a crusade ground. There are certain things if you are teaching on a crusade ground, you will see people shouting, preach, preacher, but believe me based on the truth of scripture, they don't understand what you are saying. And because humans don't easily admit that they are not getting it, they feel embarrassed, they don't, they don't want to look stupid that they are not understanding you. They tell you, I'm, I'm really getting you, but they are not getting anything because spiritual things is not just about concentration. It's about your organs of perception being activated. No matter how focused you are, if that miracle of understanding has not happened to you, you will hear a lot of spiritual things. Some will make sense, some will not make sense. The carnal man. Are we learning now? Who is the carnal man? The carnal man is one who is carnally minded. Romans chapter 8 and verse 6. Romans chapter 8 and verse 6. For to be carnally minded, this is another description of the carnal man. The carnal man is one who is carnally minded. The word carnal means sensual of the flesh, of the flesh. To be carnally minded is a pathway that leads to death. This is what Paul is teaching us. To be carnally minded is a pathway that leads to death. But to be spiritually minded is a pathway that leads to life and peace. Do you get what he's saying now? He's saying that carnality, to be carnally minded, is like following a road, following a route, that the end of that journey is death. Death there does not just mean cessation of living. It is a description of a kind of state. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded, he says, is life and peace. So one who is carnally minded is usually of the flesh under the victim the the a slave to the impulses of the flesh disobedience to the word of god are we together now always always in argument with spiritual things even though they are saved they are not malleable to receive the word of god that is able to transform them they have not experienced the washing of the water by the word they've not contended for transformation and let me tell you the truth it is a dangerous thing when carnal people become leaders in the house of god because you see at that point that ministry or that church or that spiritual organization will be in trouble one of the the the, the troubles that they will go into is that they cannot receive what god wants them to do because you see when you are dealing with spiritual things it's not like you do business and like you run secular organizations you have to depend on the impulses of the spirit and in many regards there will be foolishness to you at the moment it is later you see the hidden wisdom in that instruction it's important that those who serve god's word it's important that those who occupy positions of leadership in church be people who are void of carnal mindedness that they are spiritual people so we have the natural man we have the carnal man number three and this is where we will we'll dwell a bit tonight we have what the bible calls the spiritual man the spiritual man the spiritual man hallelujah who is this kind of man that the bible calls the spiritual man He's one who is saved. You have to be saved. Number two, transformed. The spiritual man is one who has submitted himself to be transformed by the word. Who is a spiritual man? 
one who is saved one who has submitted himself or herself to transformation by the word of God number three the spiritual man is one who has become spiritually minded Romans 8 and 6 we considered that earlier spiritually minded a spiritual man is one who is spiritually minded a spiritual man is one who is obedient to the word of God now I'll be sharing with you a few of these features we'll be looking at it in details but just to contrast for you these three kinds of men that in every congregation in every community in every nation in fact in every spiritual family like there are various kinds of vessels there are these three kinds of men because everywhere men are gathered unto the Lord the Lord himself adds daily as many as should be saved he expects them to be saved as they come but until they are saved they are not yet saved so we have the natural man we have the carnal man we have the spiritual man i hate to tell you this but in this beautiful congregation tonight and across the many who are following around the world we have these three kinds of people they are those who have never met jesus perhaps they are even following from other religions other faith other practices they are just sympathetic to the idea of spirituality or they like the idea of koinonia or joshua selman or they're just good people really like the rich young ruler the rich young ruler was successful by every standard but he was still a natural man he came to jesus and he said good master what must i do to inherit eternal life and he said wow you call me good no man is good except god so the fact that you have called me good that means you discern that i'm not all human you see that now and then he began to give him all the requirements and the man left sad because he had great possessions the bible said how does a natural man become a carnal man i have taught you endlessly here but it is part of how we build people by repetition you transit from being a natural man to being a believer in fact by encountering jesus i need to drum this in your heart reading the bible does not automatically make you saved it is important reading the bible and praying does not turn you from an unsaved person to a saved person it could make you a believer a believer in scriptural principles even a believer in jesus but not unto salvation you don't have to be saved to be a believer you can start being a believer before you are saved but you still need to be saved everybody jesus healed had to believe him to be healed so you can call them believers but there, there is believing that is unto salvation and that happens when you acknowledge the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. Are we together? You have to acknowledge the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. Believing that he died for your sin. Believing that he rose again by the glory of the Father. Believing that on confessing his lordship over your life you receive like we have taught here number one the forgiveness of sin number two you receive the gift of righteousness and three you receive the life of god are we learning now and then you become a believer and i have taught you let me repeat it again so that you will never forget that the moment you get saved please use this and help anybody you know the moment any believer gets saved if they ever ask you what is next this is the answer i'm giving to you the moment a believer gets saved the next thing is to encounter this threefold ministry that begins the journey of his transformation number one the ministry of the holy spirit never forget this i like you to listen as if you are preparing for an exam because you really are if you find anyone who gets born again or you get anyone get you know born again and the person says okay now i am saved what next i'm giving you that answer the next thing that person needs is to be introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit number two that person needs to be introduced to the ministry of the word number three that person needs to be introduced to the ministry of the teaching priest a man of god a church a congregation where he would find an opportunity to hear the word and to grow 
These three ministries work together. The teaching priest, the word of God, the Holy Spirit working in synergy to build that naive believer, genuinely saved, a genuine possessor of eternal life, but cannot manifest the riches that are embedded in that life because I have taught you that releasing the riches that come with this Zoe life is knowledge dependent. Knowledge dependent. So to the degree to which you grow in knowledge, that is the degree to which the reality of eternal life flows like a river out of you. So you can be saved and get to a point where you doubt your own salvation. Am I really saved? Because nothing is changing in my life. And some of you are like that. In fact, that's what brought you here. You are saying, Apostle, I don't know if this is my Christianity. Maybe Jesus picked me out separately and said he doesn't want to save me. You are genuinely saved. But what you do not know is that the riches, all of the riches that are in this eternal life is not just released because you are saved it is at the instance of knowledge you need to know how it's like opening the channel for a river to begin to flow and find expression so many believers who are saved may never have an opportunity to experience the victorious life to experience ever increasing glory to get to a realm of power to become witnesses indeed and in experience and the missing link is not their salvation at all is that for some reason some of them never had the opportunity like the believers in acts chapter 19 from verse 1 to 4 the Bible says Paul having passed through the upper coast he came and he met certain brethren there disciples they were under a mentor they were saved and he said to them number verse 2 he says have ye received the Holy Ghost since he believed so they were believers they were saved they were not natural people in fact they had submitted to discipleship the trouble was the teaching priest the individual who was mentoring them was limited himself. He was not a bad person, but he was limited. And he only taught them from the residue of his limitation. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much heard. Can you imagine this? We have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Any Holy Ghost. Any Holy Ghost. Verse 3. Paul was surprised. He said, unto what then were you baptized for God's sake? And they said, unto John's baptism. Paul now began to give them a sound exegesis, the progression that from repentance, it does not stop there. Are we together now? That the baptism of John is not a waste, he was telling them, that you, but that it was an usher to help you believe on he who should come. That is on Jesus Christ. Verse 5, the Bible says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus verse 6 and Paul laid his hands on them they were saved already but there was no possibility for these people to become spiritual men because they had violated the pathway that leads to grace and glory and Paul came to them laid hands on them that they may receive the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied how many believers today get saved and quite honestly, I just want to stay here for a minute. They don't even know what to do with their Christian life. And so we tell them, okay, find a Bible-believing church. And that is wonderful. And do you know, I've told you in Koinonia, one of the greatest blessings you can give any new convert is to take the person to the right spiritual family. It is a great blessing. A believer's life can literally become stunted to defeat, stunted to failure, even stunted to death. Not necessarily because he was not saved, but that he did not have an opportunity to sit under a spiritual family that will feed him with truth. Truth that makes for growth. Like a baby born already. So that baby is already alive. But the baby can be so malnourished, it can lead to ill health, it can stunt the baby's growth and it can even kill the baby. We invest billions of dollars world over today trying to help manage the issue of malnutrition of children. The way we do it in our world today is how it is in the realm of the spirit. There are many believers who cannot attain onto that stature of spiritual men because 
they do not have the kind of people are you seeing why it is important that god will help us men of god to keep raising others the more they are matured spiritual people the more they can help spread this campaign of producing maturity out of ordinary believers for as long as we just have one two three four five men of god there's only so much you can do we only have 24 hours so the more spiritual men are raised the greater it is for the program of god are we together now there are meetings today with all humility i may not be able to attend either because of my schedule or because of whatever it is but the believers there they need to hear the word of god and so if a territory just depends on only joshua selman you see that the program of god is in trouble that means God must raise people so that as he's promoting you, the realm you are living, somebody must occupy that place too. Are we together now? Once upon a time, there are places we go to now and there are meetings that God is granting us grace to be able to host. We couldn't have done that. It was the Reinhard Bonkers and the rest now. We were in our yesterday's version, doing what God was doing. But as we step, we must make sure that that space is not left empty. But the things that thou hast received of me, it says, commit thou to faithful men who will commit it to others too. That means there should be a lot of spiritual men who can help students in secondary school, help students in the university and colleges, help students in, for, for want of word, what you will call small churches around the villages or countryside. A time can come where because of your schedules and quite honestly, because of how God has lifted you, it may not be easy to go back to some of these platforms. But if you do not raise men, then God's program becomes affected. Are we together now? Yeah. And for some of you, let me tell you this. I will digress in one minute and tell you this. When God begins to walk with you, a time comes when it's like a, a spiritual industrial attachment. God will give you a little assignment. It's not like he's releasing you to ministry, but he will give you a little assignment. Maybe go to your campus or during Christmas, go to a little church that is in your neighborhood. And he says, just organize one day worship program, one day prayer program. That is God helping you to help others. Are we together now? You don't need to have the name of a ministry. You just need to be a serious Christian. And you gather 20 people, 30 young people, you invest in prayer, you invest in the word, you teach them and build them. You use two weeks, say, of a Christmas period. Instead of wasting their time moving around aimlessly, you bring this. Imagine teaching them on the things, the rudiments of the faith, teaching them on purpose, helping them to encounter the supernatural power of God, creating a prayer schedule for them, creating a word study schedule, and then you leave. You have helped those people. You will be surprised that you will return back there after one year and you'll find mighty men you have raised. If they work with the program, literally. Listen, one of the things you'll be learning tonight is that as a spiritual man, God gives you the mandate to literally put his program in motion in a territory and you can walk away without being afraid of the program dying. That is the potency you have laid hold on eternal life. You can turn men to spiritual people. That means God can send you and say go to Nasarawa for one year and keep you there. By the time we return, we should find mighty men, not members. You have mastered what it takes to make a giant in the spirit every time you see an individual you know what is next from salvation you know what is next are we together now you can teach them you can guide them you can help them you can strengthen the pastors and then god sends you to another assignment it's a terrible thing for a spiritual man to be in a place even if it's for one week and you do not leave an imprint of grace an imprint of power you don't set up a spiritual system that runs it is because we are always ministry conscious that's why the work of God fails. If it is not in my name and my platform, it rather dies. Are we learning now? So imagine that God sends you, maybe your local assembly, maybe somewhere where you raise some persons and you say, young people come. I want to teach you how to be spiritual people. Now that I'm around your region, we are going to have a three-day conference gather all your friends all the serious people you know who love jesus bring them together we'll have a, a free conference and you begin to teach them 
Apostle, what do I teach? This is what I'm teaching you now. So that you don't disgrace yourself and disgrace everyone. You can't gather them and say, I don't know what to say. No, there is intelligence to how you build people. Are we together? Now they are saved. The first day can be evangelism. Fire and power. Trust God for miracles. Mighty manifestations. You may gather children, but the beautiful thing is you will see women there too. Even if men don't come. You will see one mama will stroll and say, what's happening here? He said, mama, fire is falling from heaven over people. So I'm, I'm here. Oh. By tomorrow, she will drag her stubborn son and say, you must follow me. God is moving in this area. And you'll be surprised that son can be the next prophet. That son can be the next apostle. Is someone learning already? And then you begin that work of building. Okay? You guys are now saved. What is the next thing? You teach them the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You teach them the value of the word of God. You teach them the value of prayer. You teach them the value of corporate fellowship. And then you set up a system for them. Don't leave it just at teaching. Set up a system for them. Apostle, what if I'm not there? Remember the Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest. You have to trust what the Holy Spirit can do. Some of you, the way you became matured is that you were saved by a missionary somewhere and he trusted God with you and left. And even though you thought you would never be strong, God held you. You went left and center like a pendulum. He still brought you back. Are we together now? That's God for you. You have to trust the preserving power of God. When you hand men over to God, trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Hallelujah. How did I get to the subject of crusades? Maybe God is speaking to someone who that crusade you have been you have been running away from. Are you sure you will run away now that you've had you've been saying, God, confirm it? Koinonia for you. There are four features of any true spiritual man. And I have to teach you this. If you don't find these four features in any believer, no matter what kind of acclaimed stature, that person, according to scripture, is not considered a spiritual man. Hallelujah. I want to show you by the spirit of the living God, four features that must be in any and every believer who has attained unto a stature of true spirituality. Number one, the first proof that you are a spiritual man is your affection, your heart, your affection. Your affection must be on heavenly spiritual things. Your affection must be on Jesus and his program more than any other thing. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. A spiritual man, among other descriptions, is one whose affection. The Bible says, if ye be risen with Christ, it says, seek those things which are where? Above. Where Christ seated at the right hand of God. Verse 2. It says, set your affection. The same way you place a thermostat. Set your affection on things above and not things of the earth. One of the ways you will know God is transiting you to spirituality is that he begins to cut the effect. Listen carefully. Not necessarily the desire, but the effect of carnal things around your life. It doesn't mean they don't benefit you. Money, people, anything that is not Christ, there is a position it will never rise beyond in your life. You are going through the journey of spirituality. And the irony is that when you walk with God, those things you want will never come to you until he's enthroned above every other thing. Are we together now? If you are not in Christ, you can pursue money at the expense of your salvation, pursue whatever it is, a job, a career, an ambition. But when you come into Christ, he begins to reorder. There is an order with which things must be in your life for your Christian experience to profit you. If there is anything in your life that becomes a greater desire, commands your affection above your love for Jesus Christ, it will tamper with your efficiency. That's how God designed man. 
God designed man such that he becomes your highest obsession. He becomes your highest priority. Your affection literally, literally becomes upon Jesus above every other thing. Now, it does not mean you will be like we say, heavenly, uh, what they call you, earthly useless and heavenly useful or something like that. You see that now. There are people who have made that mistake and they have failed in every other area of their life and credited their failure in life and destiny to their love for Jesus. I do not believe that. What he does is that he keeps transiting the love of God in your heart until it becomes greater than money, greater than titles. Who is God speaking to? Greater than ambition. You really become a spiritual man when you get to a point where nothing and no one can take the place of God in your life. Someone say your affection. One more time, say your affection. There are many people who claim they are spiritual people, but they have many, many idols, piles of idols within their heart that will never allow them to serve the purposes of God effectively. Show me a man who has journeyed with the spirit in life and destiny and is about to access power and grace. The first thing God deals with is your heart and your affection. Let me tell you the truth. This affection issue, bar it can take 10 years with the Holy Ghost working on you on it. Don't you think it's just one service or three days retreat? There are idols already in our hearts before we got saved. And those idols will not live on their own. You have to allow the Spirit of God to keep going through that process of circumcision until you get to a point where he, become your, he becomes your highest priority it is that state in the spirit the bible calls death death there does not mean to cease to live death there does not mean to cease to be useful to your environment many people want power many people want grace they fast they pray but they refuse to allow God do that circumcision within their heart until Jesus and his purposes becomes your highest priority. It is not the pathway for a preacher. It is the pathway for a spiritual man. It has nothing to do with answering the call to ministry. If you want to be used by God, you want to become one who is mighty and of weight in the spirit. I am telling you, the first thing that defines spirituality is this circumcision that the spirit of God will have to met out upon your heart. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. Mm. My son, you are my son, but give me thine heart. Everybody say thy heart. My son, give me your heart. This is how God makes men spiritual. No matter how many verses you recite, there is a place for it. No matter how many crusades you attend or organize, no matter how much money you give in church, Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. The foundation for true spirituality is death to self. That means Christ being exalted through your motives, your desires, until all that is left in your life is Christ. This is the way of power. This is truly the way of power. What's that Tabitha song? I seek your face. Is she here? Give her the mic. Let her sing that song for me. I seek your face. I want to know you. For some of you, you are wondering why you cannot do much for the kingdom. You are wondering why you do not have weight in the spirit. You don't assume spirituality. It is a gateway. There is a path you follow. And the path is the path of death. Set your affection on things above and not things of the earth. 
that you love him more than ministry you love him more than money you love him more than marriage more than children you love him more than titles you love him more than koinonia more than joshua selman when he becomes your obsession and your affection he does not produce fanatism he produces spirituality spirituality sing it for me i want to know you i seek your face i seek your face i want to know you that must be someone's prayer tonight Must become your pride tonight. Now, hear me. Let me teach you how people die in the spirit. The death that brings glory. Sit down, please. Sit down. Sit down. You see, there is a law in the spirit. When you see a man in the spirit, what becomes your highest priority is what is reflected out of your spirit man. Listen carefully. You truly become a spiritual man when you reflect the Christ. The degree to which self is absent is the degree to which you have become spiritual. So, men in their pursuit for meaning and whatever have all kinds of things scheduled in their heart. Genuine, sincere desires. Some of you, visa. Some of you, marriage. Some of you, children. Are we together now? Some of you, education. These are not wrong desires. Some of you politics, some of you business, some of you want to honestly make it. Some of you are hoping to travel out of Nigeria, whatever it is, you have your desires. When God comes and you say, Lord, I love you, let me tell you what he does. He will not force you because he's not a demon spirit. Are we together? But he's going to lead you to a path in the spirit where you give him access to begin to do a replacement system that means he begins to dethrone all those things that have become your obsession above him. He doesn't have a problem with them. It is the position they have kept him in your life that he's fighting. Are we together now? God does not just want to be in your heart as number what? There are people who have Jesus in their heart, but he's number 81. So he's, he's not just interested in being in your heart. He must be your highest priority. And let me tell you, that journey is hard depending on how many idols you have. Some of you have only 10 idols. Maybe the journey might be easier. But there are others who have piles of idols. Idols that lusts and flesh and ambition and carnal pursuits have piled up. And Jesus is somewhere down the list. Now let me tell you how he does it. He does not do it by fighting you. He does it by allowing every one of those things to try to be him. They will fail one by one until <laughs> he does not make them fail. They could not have been God in your life. So in the presence of real life situation, your boasting in your finances or your job or your education a day will come in life it will fail you and that's the day he will say this is what i'm saying anything that was not creator cannot be god one by one one by one sunday after sunday death begins to happen to you and you see the more that process of dethroning happens the more glory begins to manifest in your life 
the lighter you are in the spirit yet the heavier you are are we together now because you get to a point where you are not afraid of losing things again that is the level where death is almost finished within you you are not afraid of losing things again you are not irresponsible but you know that if God places any demand on your life your answer is yes sir You know, many people claim and brag about spirituality. Spirituality is not about longevity in church. Let's see what you can give and let's see what you have laid down. Jesus the spiritual demonstrated spirituality not just by miracles. He laid down everything including his life. What you laid down is proof of spirituality. Can God place a demand on that ministry and you say, Lord, it belongs to you? Can God place a demand on that bank account and you say, Lord, it belongs to you? Can God place a demand upon you? Can God relocate you by himself? And yet you say, God, I have my own plans. Don't come and disrupt my life. I tell you why many people do not see the power of God. They are not malleable enough. They have not learned the excellency of death unto Christ. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him. But what happened was that he died first. Many of us come to God full of our ambitions and our desires. Nothing wrong with that. But we just come to use God so that he will help us achieve our goals. Then when we achieve our goals, we push him away and say, God, if I do need you in the course of my sojourn, please make sure you are available for me to call you again. Unfortunately, it does not work that way. The way of power you want to lay hands on the sick and have the sick healed no god is not a herbalist ladies and gentlemen you can read it in your bible they shall lay hands on the sick the problem is not the scripture the problem is that the hand that is being laid is not yet dead and so life cannot come out because paul says death works in us that life is not the scripture that is wrong you want to speak over destinies and have the heavens open over them? Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. It's beyond just good English. You can learn all the good English. But there is life that comes out of death. The first feature of a spiritual man is your affection. Let me see where your desires are. And I can tell you whether you are joining correctly with the spirit. Nothing is wrong with seeking to be empowered financially nothing is wrong with seeking a good life but your utmost priority your cry and your desire when god's heartbeat becomes your heartbeat when his desire becomes your desire not as a man of god but as one who loves him that there is absolutely nothing you cannot lay down for him let me tell you no man has the power to get to that state by himself no matter how yielded you are if you ever claim you got there by yourself is proof that you lied you met a familiar spirit only god can take men so here's what he says abraham i want to lead you to a path that brings glory but take your son your only son <laughs> if you are a believer and you have worked with god and he has never placed a demand on something heavy over your life it is either that instruction is coming or it is not God you are following I'm telling you this one day there will be a demand I'm not talking of money this is not this is not your life apostle but i keep sensing that i'm one of these end time vessels that will be carrying the healing anointing my brother the until you are a spiritual man you will not be able to host that glory that glory will kill you on your own if it comes upon you without dying most people don't really know what is on a vessel that produces these wonders that your eyes cannot see it is not just oil oh no if God opens your eyes to see a truly anointed man in the spirit, you are going to see a radiance of glory. It's like a garment and those garments are in weights and the weights of those garments determines the command, the things that happen in the physical. It is true. 
when Jesus was transfigured he showed us his spirit man pure light that's what he saw it's beyond sermons you are a spiritual man to the degree to which you die the degree to which you die to die to ambitions does not mean to shelve them no to die to ambitions to die to your lust and your quest for money or things it doesn't mean to shelve them ladies and gentlemen what it means is to enthrone christ until there is nothing higher than him in your heart higher than him in your life higher than him in your destiny that is the realm of power when you can get to that state in the spirit i tell you you will command power in a way you will shut down the gates of nations god will give you keys there are many people claiming realms these realms don't come just by receiving death is the pathway when that is the level you get to as a worshiper you raise one song it doesn't matter the song it doesn't matter whether the instrumentalist is playing well or not there is life that comes from it you are singing from the place of death Christ and throne I seek your face I seek your face I want to know I want to know I seek your face There are some of you by this teaching you will step into seasons with the spirit you yourself will not understand what god is doing god can give you an instruction for one year and say my son without fail wake up every night tired or not 12 to 3 that is my covenant time with you it may not be in the bible but it is the pathway that leads you to become a spiritual man are we together there are times God will come with certain instructions one day he may tell you to empty your account he doesn't need your money for God's sake he's trying to remove that money from your heart not your account hallelujah there are times you can go to preach and while you are boiling wanting to minister and see the power of God he will just ask you make an altar call and go back to your seat ah but god my my destiny helpers are here this is the opportunity to i mean make my calling and my election sure and he says you do what i've asked you to do and you will be perceived as so weak he's teaching you how to be more focused on glorifying him than promoting self let me tell you the truth because god is a patient teacher depending on your yieldedness you can spend 20 years and you are in one class in the school of the spirit because if that circumcision does not happen you will be surprised your preaching is right yet there is no life you will be it's like a fridge that is not powered you will you will organize programs and lay hands genuinely on people and never see any testimony but when you pass through that that realm of death i have seen this many times in my visions i know what it looks like is like a garment but the garment is not one you can remove but it can be removed when the garment is placed on you it becomes part of you literally you are immersed now people cannot see it physically but that's what you carry it's an atmosphere that garment emits light it emits energy and sometimes it can be so compelling that anyone who comes within your spiritual circumference they come under the influence of that grace this is what makes you a mysterious person someone just comes to you and says look i'm going through all kinds of situations and you tell the person go it is done the person even feels offended you didn't even pray for me ah the person did not know that while they were seated there you, they were being immersed under a cloud of glory something was happening to them they leave that place and doors begin to open in a strange way look at what jesus told the demons one word go that's it 
One word. There is a path to greater power and greater glory. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the path of spiritual men. If you see anyone today, dead or alive, that is doing much for the kingdom with authenticity and truth, there is no escaping that class. God must vet your desires, probe your desires, purge your desires, circumcise your heart until all that is left is Christ. For some of us, the idol in your heart is ministry. You can throw God away to have ministry. Unfortunately, you will not get it that way. It is a loser's path. Until God breaks that obsession for ministry and replaces it with an obsession for Him, that is when you will do ministry. There are others, the path is money. You love Jesus, but this, your appetite for money, you can stop prayer for money. You can stop anything for money. You can tell lies for money, although you are a child of God. You don't like what you're hearing. <laughs> Let me tell you this. The generation that refuses to die is the generation that will remain powerless. 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 Void of glory. Void of glory. Void of glory. You cannot be able to do much for the kingdom that way. Hallelujah. I remember many years ago, I used to see visions of these things. I even used to announce it then in Koinonia in Zaria. Sometimes when I, I'm done with my retreat, I now see, you know how you decorate a military man? That's what I see in a vision. And then maybe something else, a star or a badge. And then I just come back from that retreat and it's another level of light. It's another level of power. And then a time came, the visions began to change. I didn't see that, mil that military man uniform again. I started seeing garments. I mean, just like, you know how you throw a fishing net? They just throw it on you. And it just wraps by itself. You don't try to wear it. It wears itself into you. It's like it was designed for your shape without missing an inch. It's like the garment enters into you and all you see is light. And you come out from that realm of glory. You will do wonders. And yet there are other dimensions. There is a dimension where it's not only light you will see, it's fire. There are cloaks of fire. The Bible says he maketh his angels wings. Is it not in your Bible? And his ministers flames. You think he just sets them on fire? It's a garment that you wear. Flames of fire. Flames of fire. These are the dimensions that men like Maurice Sorulo got to. That occultic people and demon spirits say they fear the prayers of men like Maurice Rulo. That these guys who utter prayers with the simplicity. It was not in what they were saying. It's in the realm they were praying from and speaking from. Listen to me. Koinonia, hear me. I am a strong advocate of living a balanced Christian life. I am a strong advocate of prospering while you serve God, excelling while you serve God, advancing while you serve God. But as far as tonight's teaching is concerned, I am telling you, if there is any pursuit that is nobler, higher, greater than your desire to see Jesus revealed, then you are not yet a spiritual man. You can check yourself and know by this index of your affection. Many years ago, the Lord asked me a question and he said, son, can you die for me? I honestly thought about it sincerely and I said, no, 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 I can suffer for you. I was already suffering for him. He said, no, I can suffer for you. I can be misunderstood for you. I can do whatever for you, but death, Kai, mm. I know some of you will say yes, but I said, no, honestly, I searched my heart and I said, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm ready. And then he did something to my heart. I don't know what he did though. But it's like, a, it's like something, you know how you remove something from a man that makes you half man and half something else. It is at that point you will see weights of glory. You will see things that others are looking for. And God carries it and brings it to your life. You know why? Because the string that connects you to things have been broken. The string that connects you to money, titles, and all of this has been broken. 
at that point God is not restrained to trust you with things material things spiritual things because he knows that whether they are with you is the same thing as being with him ladies and gentlemen I'm showing you a very big secret tonight many people do not know the true path of power praying and fasting only comes as a subset a means to achieve this goal if this goal is not your drive to dethrone things you can be engaged in a lot of sincere spiritual activities but they will fail to deliver are we together everybody say your affection this is one of the things that satan loves to plant desires within your heart desires that grow to become a tree that is greater than christ so you love jesus you love church but your real concern is money your real concern is other things jesus is just saying well at least i'm sympathetic to the idea jesus we're going to take a minute to cry before i give you the remaining you're going to cry from the depth of your heart father everything i have enthroned that is above you in my life everything i have enthroned that is above you in my life everything i have enthroned that is above you in my life let it die tonight let it die tonight let it die let it be dethroned christ be lifted be the epicenter the ultimate pursuit the highest priority go ahead and pray the spiritual man following the pathway of your affections circumcised your desires circumcised to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace your heart my son give me your heart not your offering give me your heart not your titles give me your heart not your plans not just your goals i want your heart when i find your heart take a minute to pray Oh, send death. death walks in us that life may walk in you. Death walks in us that life may walk in you. A garment of greater glory. A garment of greater glory. In the name of Jesus. A garment of greater glory. In Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray so the first feature please sit down please sit down the first feature of a true spiritual man is seen in your affection your heart the Bible says where your treasure is that is also where your heart will be I can know what you treasure by looking at where your heart looks at for where your treasure is there will your heart be hallelujah I've prayed and cried before God that may not, nothing at all ever stand the place of my love and passion for him you've heard me say it I will close koinonia a thousand times if he demands it a thousand times if he demands it and I'm not saying it is not just a preacher's politics a thousand times I love what he's assigned me to do but not at the expense of my love for him not at the expense of my relationship with him I rather be considered a failure by men and win with my relationship with Jesus I am satisfied some of you would rather fail with Jesus a thousand times and have the form of success in the eyes of men I 
Are you learning? Maybe a man of God is watching and you are wondering why grace and power does not flow in your life. You are wondering what is restraining the hand of God from making this investment. I'm showing you the key. It is not that you are a bad person. It's that there are idols and Dagon needs to fall tonight. Fall. Dagon. <laughs> Ambitions. Because you see, if those idols remain and the anointing comes upon your heart, it is that very anointing that will kill you. Because the anointing fights everything that is not God. And if you pile idols in your heart and want that oil to be poured upon it, you are only doing yourself a disservice. All that I long for is found in your love. You are everything to me. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are everything. Lord, you are everything. Sing one more time. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are everything. You are everything. Hallelujah. That's what spiritual circumcision is. The removal of something that matters to you. Now let me tell you this. Most people think when you give Jesus everything, you become a failure in life. And it means those plans that you lay down for him never come to pass. No, that is even how they come to pass more efficiently. I do not know anyone who laid down anything genuinely and did not pick it back up again in glory. Once his place is there, then every other thing can find value in your life. The money you are trying to look for that is distracting your passion and your appetite for him, I can tell you this. You can learn all the laws you can learn, but when you follow his way, you will find him but with it you will find glory in a way you never imagined in a proportion you never imagined you can be looking for power as an idol looking for power outside of jesus why do you want power because you were told that once you have power ministry works well once you have power crowds will come once you have power you will be famous once you have power invitations will come do you know you can look for power as an idol and so because you were told that prayer and fasting produces power oh yeah you are praying you are fasting but it's from a standpoint of idolatry when jesus comes you say go back it's not you i'm fasting for i'm fasting for power send power and you go back let's hurry up so the first feature of a spiritual man is your affection your heart number two what is the second feature of a spiritual man your mentality 
the Bible calls it being spiritually minded. The second feature of a spiritual man is that you have a mentality, a mentality that is spiritual, a mentality that is spiritual. Romans 8, 6, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. A mentality that is spiritual, your first response to life, your first response to things is from a spiritual standpoint. Spiritually minded. Spiritually minded. You see life as God sees it. Are we together now? This is very important. Number three, let me hurry up. Spiritually minded. Well, let me just say one or two things about being spiritually minded. I hope you know that being spiritually minded is a product of word-based transformation. Write that down, please. In fact, put it this way, to be spiritually minded through word-based transformation. There are various templates for adopting mindsets. The mindsets that makes a man spiritually minded must be word-based, word-based transformation. Secular enlightenment is a form of enlightenment, but it does not necessarily produce spirituality. Witchcraft is a form of enlightenment, but it does not necessarily produce true spirituality. I hope you know being a spiritual man does not mean being a spirit. Are we together now? Yes. It doesn't mean being superstitious. It doesn't even mean being demonic. Word-based transformation. You are as spiritually minded as your submission to the word of God. You are as spiritually minded as your submission to the word of God. Write that down. You are as spiritually minded as your submission to the word of God. You are as spiritually minded as your submission to the word of God. And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scripture, which is able to make you wise unto salvation and so on and so forth. And now brethren, Acts 20, 32, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified, spiritually minded spiritually minded your first response to things is from the word of god your first response to life is from the word of god you have become a spiritual man you have submitted to the word of god it has influenced your thinking it is the basis for your decisions it is the basis for your argument it is the basis for your activity that everything in your life has been engineered to be word compliant the way you respond as the word of God demands. The way you give as the word of God demands. Are we together now? Your first response to life. Now look up please. When you become a spiritual man, you will not say things like, I have my church mind and then I have the other one. Or I will remove this church thing and beat you. You see that, that thing? And then I will come back again. You are not spiritual because spirituality has nothing to do with which day of the week sunday wednesday it has nothing to do with whether you are in church or you are in the office you have submitted to the word of god to gain supremacy over your thinking listen the bible says to be spiritually minded is a pathway that leads to life and leads to peace so how does a spiritual man behave when you are in trouble don't guess what does the word of God says. Call upon me in the day of trouble. That means a spiritual man, your first response, anytime things are unfavorable, is prayer. Are we together? It is foolish to take actions when you have not prayed. You will most likely act in the flesh. Oh, just to let you know that tomorrow you are going to lose your job. 
How does a spiritual man act? The Bible says to be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. You don't look at your superior to his face and say, God punish you. It will not be well with you. I reject that statement. No, 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 no. You are not acting in wisdom. If you submit to the word of God, he tells you, let every man be subject to higher powers. So even if you don't believe what they are saying, you block your heart from receiving that negative prophecy, but you don't insult them. You go back to your secret place and say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that I am the head and not the tail. You don't shout that on the face of your director. Even if it's me, I'll fire you. Spiritual men. There is wisdom in spirituality. Are we together? All of a sudden you hear a report. Ah, it looks like something is forming or growing in your body that has a name you don't like. Hey, so it has finally come to me. No, no, no. I know this sounds funny, but let me tell you this. A spiritual man understands that you are a king and you are a priest and that your words carry power. You will not speak nonsense and then forgive yourself later on. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. The Bible says he keepeth his bones and none is missing. I decree and declare that cancer has no place in this body. I decree and declare that I live and not die. I live and not die. I live and not die. I speak life. I've been given the power to choose and I make use of my will. I choose life spiritual man spiritual man spiritual man most believers have not submitted to the transforming power of the spirit are we together you see when it has to do with transformation you don't choose the verses you like and believe them you submit yourself to the whole counsel of God that gives you wisdom. The reason why many believers' transformation looks like foolishness is that they select a few parts that they like. Are we together? Then the parts they have not received now cancels out on the wisdom of what they have. When you want to be transformed, don't do selective transformation. Do wholesome transformation. Selective transformation means I like this truth. No matter how uncomfortable it is, if it is backed up by the integrity of God's word and will make for your profiting, you must embrace it. Who is learning? There are many, many believers whose transformation is selective. Is the reason why they are not able to manifest the Christ life and to manifest spirituality in power. Wholesome transformation. There is seed that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is seed that withholdeth more than is meat and tends to poverty. I obtain grace to obey scripture. No debate, no argument. In the name of Jesus, I obtain the giving grace and I receive understanding to know more about it so that my action will be based on conviction and understanding. A spiritual man. When men say there is a casting down, the Bible says for you, you will say that there is a lifting up. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I wake up this morning and I declare there is a lifting up. Even though things are not yet the way it should be, I still declare that I, there is a lifting up. Spiritual man. Who is learning? So you must be spiritually minded. There are things I do not believe can happen to me. Honestly. It is not pride. I don't believe it. For instance, that someone will take my name to a harbor list and it will actually work. Maybe you believe it, but me, I don't believe it. Unfortunately. No, it won't work. And it has nothing to do with being a man of God. Hallelujah. You've had, I, I first feel sorry for both the person and the harbor list. Honestly, I really feel sorry for the person. And the reason for feeling sorry is because of the kind of God that will answer them. Are we together? I believe as a person that no man can kill me before my time. I believe it. Now, it's, it's, it's left for you to choose what to believe. But this is what I believe. I believe that I will never struggle financially as I serve the purposes of God. No. Because he's placed too much in my life to be valuable and I understand the law of value. Are we together now? That rewards follow value. 
And if what I am giving is value indeed, then God's faithfulness will keep his law to be at work. This is what I believe. I believe that everybody cannot hate me. Why? Because everybody did not hate Jesus and everybody does not hate Satan. And so my focus is on those, the few that God can put together. One man who likes you can make the world of difference. And so in prayer, praying for a destiny helper, I need not worry about who doesn't like you. No, 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 no. The person ordained by God to like you enough to invest in your destiny is all you need to rise. Are we together? I believe there are arrows that fly by day, but I also believe that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous can come into it and he is safe. Spiritually minded. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.